He's a good God. He's a great God. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. And are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? If you're glad, shake your neighbor's hand and say, God loves you. Come on. I can't hear God loves you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 <clears throat> well, you know, when uh, I was growing up and, and, my, and I was in my mother's lap, I remember that my mom used to always tell me a story. And you know, we all like stories, don't we? Right? Even when we grow old, we like stories. My wife still reads read stories every night before she goes to sleep. And she loves stories. And when our sons were growing up, we were, you know, very excited to share stories with them. And they would be very keenly listening to every story that we had to tell them. And um, they were very excited because they would hear the story, they will ask questions, and then they will fall off to sleep. And, uh, and I believe all of us, right? All our mamas and papas have read us stories and, uh, and we have watched some story movies and, and cartoons and all that stuff. I'm going to share with you a story this morning. Amen? There was a factory worker. And after the day's work, you know what he did is that he was carrying a wheelbarrow all across the factory and he was exiting the security point. And at the security point, the security guard was asking a question. Hey guy, what have you got in your wheelbarrow? He said, sir, I've got a box. He said, I can see the box. But he said, what is in the box? So he said, sir, in the day's work, you know, they would work in the factory. They will, you know, the sawdust is swept on the side and that sawdust I needed. So I collected it in the box and I put it in the box and I'm taking it. He said, okay, show me. So he opened the box and showed and apparently there was sawdust. And then it happened the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day. And all these days, you know, he had a clearance from the security. On the fifth day, the security man asked and he said, Hey, he was going with his wheelbarrow. He said, what have you got in your wheelbarrow? He said, I've got a box. And what is in the box? He said, I've got sawdust in the box as usual. He said, that's great, you know, but I've got some great feeling in my spirit that, you know, you are not telling me the truth. What are you stealing? Are you with me? What are you stealing? He asked a question. And so when he asked that question, what are you stealing? He said, uh, please be honest with me because I'm not going to report to the authorities if you're going to be honest with me. He said, fine, that's great. If you want to hear my story, let me tell you what I was stealing was the wheelbarrows. <laughs> you know, a lot of time what we do is that we are so focused in the small box of gift that is lying in the wheelbarrow a small grain of sand that pokes our heel in our shoes, we are so focused on the smaller thing that we forget the big picture that God wants to give to you and paint to you this morning. A lot of time we will forget to see the bigger picture that God wants to give you, the bigger gift that God wants to give you, the bigger blessings that God wants to give you, the bigger encouragement that God wants to bless you with, the bigger and the better hope that God wants to give you, that we are still looking at that small thing and our focus is on a small gift box that is in the wheelbarrow. Are you with me? But let me tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, let me tell you that God is interested to not only usher you in to his kingdom but he wants to bless you abundantly in his kingdom because the bible says in the book of john chapter 10 verse 10 jesus said the thief comes to steal to kill and to destroy but i have come so that you will have life and life more in abundance that means jesus is saying that you will not only have an ordinary life but you will have an extraordinary life you will have an abundant living you will be blessed with hope with courage with boldness and with the wisdom of God with the power of God with the best gifts of the Holy Spirit and I will bless you with the best 
But a lot of time we as Christians, we settle for the small thing that we, our eyes can see and we miss the big picture and God is showing you the big picture all along but we are still willing to stay at that outer coat where God has brought us in and we are happy with our goosebump worship, we are happy with our clapping, we are happy with our dancing, we are happy with our singing but we don't want to enter into the holy of holies and we don't want to go into the holiest place where God wants to shower to you and let you know the bigger gift that is awaiting for every believer in the name of Jesus hallelujah and so let me tell you my dear brothers and sisters that Jesus loves you the most in this church and we the leadership and the pastors of this church we love you with the love of the Lord why because we have decided to follow Yeshua we have decided to imitate the the the, the footsteps of our Messiah and want to live the life and the lifestyle of Jesus so that we'll be able to love you with his love in the name of Jesus hallelujah Praise the Lord. And so it is important for you and I to understand that God is interested to give you a powerful gift uh, that you have not yet fathomed or imagined uh, or probably have lived that gift for a while uh, but over a period of time you have not enjoyed the blessing of that gift that God has already given to you in the name of Jesus. And for hundreds of years, my dear brothers and sisters, there have been countless questions concerning this powerful gift of God that Christians receiving the power of the Holy Spirit a lot of time we are so happy with our calling a lot of time we are so happy we are pre with our predestination we are happy with our calling and we stay at our calling and we don't move forward in our calling but Jesus is saying you are not even not only called but you have been justified and a lot of time people are staying at that place of justification and that place of justification is just the outer court where you are in the presence of God you are worshipping the Lord you are glorifying the Lord and you are enjoying the praise and worship and you are making some sound in the house of God there is noise in the outer court my dear brothers and sisters when you are justified there are many noises that you hear in your voice in your ears and, and there are many noises that you hear when you are justified and you are in the outer court but God is saying hey come on in into the holy of holies come in in the holy place and I will sanctify you and I will bless you with my spirit and I will purge you and I will wash you and I will anoint you and I will set you so that your incense will come unto me and I will be glorified in your incense uh, and I will be well pleased uh, with the prayers that you're going to offer and that's what God is interested in. and then God says that once you've offered your prayers uh, your incense unto the Lord uh, God is saying hey come on uh, now you have been sanctified uh, in the holy place uh, God is saying step into the holiest of all uh, and God is saying hey come on that's the place uh, of your glorification that's the place uh, that I want you to be glorified uh, that is the place that I will manifest my glory I will manifest my mercy I will manifest uh, my the best and the most profound uh, and the most powerful gift uh, is my presence uh, that I will manifest to you uh, it will not be that you come to me but it will me that will live in you and with you and be with you and encourage you and bless you and you will be blessed and enlarged uh, in my territory because in the holy of holies uh, there is no interference uh, there is no disturbance uh, there are no distractions uh, it is only you and your God in the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. For hundreds of years, uh, the church has been divided over the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, and a lot of time it, it means, you know, what does it mean to receive the Holy Spirit? How important is it for the church to receive the Holy Spirit? What happens when you receive the Holy Spirit? Is there any evidence to prove that you receive the Holy Spirit? And what are his benefits? Was the Holy Spirit only available to the church or to the disciples of the first church? And the Holy Ghost is not available to us. On these issues of the doctrine of the word of God, many churches are divided and because because of the powerful gift of the Holy Spirit, many denominations have been, have been raised up. Are you with me? Why? Many denominations have occurred just because of this one powerful gift of the Holy Spirit of God uh, that has divided the church uh, and the church lives still in a dilemma as whether they can come to the unity of faith believing that the Holy Spirit was the gift of God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to teach you and I'm going to share with you what the Lord has laid into my heart that 
all of you we are a, a we are a full gospel church we believe from the book of genesis down to revelation everything that the bible tells us to do we are willing to do if the bible tells us to speak in tongues we speak in tongues we prophesy we we move in the gifts of the holy spirit we do all those things uh, but nevertheless let me tell you god is saying let the fan of my fire burn within you let it be fan in you let it be fan higher and and brighter and a stronger wind of the holy ghost come upon you and let your flame grow so high that the name of jesus will be alone glorified in your life my dear brothers and sisters these simple questions have caused a great division in the body of christ and it is very very important for us to understand that for centuries together from 2000 years there had been denomination after denomination my dear brothers and sisters there is no denomination in the holy bible are you with me there is no denomination but let me tell you there is a nomination the nomination of the gift of the salvation and there is a nomination of the gift of the holy spirit there are no denominations and if we are governed by denominations we will be probably left behind because we will come under that umbrella of a denomination that does not believe in the gift of the holy spirit are you with me so that can be a danger for the body of christ because we are so denominationally governed that we forget the nomination of the of the lord god almighty that he has nominated to the church not only the gift of salvation but also the gift of the holy spirit hallelujah it's not only being justified it's not only rejoicing in the gift of salvation it's not only getting born again and going through the waters of baptism but there is much more in jesus there is much more that has been nominated for the body of christ and god is saying hey i want you to take hold of that gift that i want to give you today amen hallelujah all right turn with me this powerful gift the book of acts chapter 1 verse 8 it's a beautiful passage of scripture verse 1 to 8 and it's it's a beautiful place where it says and being assembled together with them this is jesus after his resurrection we are going to have a celebration of the passover we are going to have a celebration passover depicts when or when the blood of the lamb was put on the lintels the all the israelites were protected but all the egyptians died the first one of the egyptians my dear brothers and sisters when the blood of jesus has come upon us we are saved it is on the day that jesus died on the cross of calvary and he sprinkled the blood upon the body of christ and he took his blood in heaven and the blood of jesus is still alive and still speaks volumes on behalf of the church that's what the spirit of god does that's what the the spirit of jesus does and the blood of jesus does is that during the death of jesus during the period of the passover we were delivered from sin we were delivered from the bondage of egypt we were delivered from the powers of pharaoh and we were set apart and set aside uh, that we will worship the name of yeshua the messiah and we will become the children of the most high god we were justified because of the blood But that was at the point when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary but after his resurrection the bible says he appeared to his disciples Remember the appearance of Jesus is for the church after his resurrection he appeared and showed himself to his own Resurrection plays a pivotal role in every believer's life we need to have the revelation of the resurrection You know why because the revelation of the resurrection will give you hope of your eternity in in God that God has put into your heart you will never be like a daisical you will never approach the presence of God with lethargy but you will be prompt you will be ready you will be diligent you will be earnestly seeking the presence of the Lord because the revelation of the resurrection will transform your perspective of eternity Are you with me So the Bible says and being assembled together with them he that is Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem not to depart from Jerusalem why did he say so because he said hey listen listen i have come to save the lost i've come to save the people and not to condemn them yes sir jesus has not come to condemn humanity but because through jesus human beings will get born again they will be saved healed delivered and set apart for holy use And so Jesus is saying to them wait in Jerusalem. And then he says but to wait for the promise of the father. I like that word promise of the father. Tell your neighbor promise of the father. Come on. 
And a lot of time people say, hey, you are born again? Praise the Lord. Yes, sir, we are born again. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir, we are water baptized. Praise the Lord. God doesn't remember our sins. Praise the Lord. But you are still sitting on the outer court. You have not progressed further. God is saying, come on, disciples. You have seen the power of mine. You have seen the miracles of mine. You have seen people being healed and delivered. But now you must wait because of the promise of the Father that is about to be manifested upon you. Which is that you have heard from me. So for John truly baptized with water. And he says, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. Yes, sir, when we accept Jesus as a personal savior, we are born again. But after being born again, there is yet another powerful gift that is in the waiting. These are all disciples of Jesus Christ. These are all the disciples of Jesus Christ on the day of the Pentecost, 120 people. These were the chosen Jews who were waiting on the top terrace and they had prayed because Jesus said, wait in the Jerusalem, wait in Jerusalem. Therefore, when they had come together, that's why coming together is a very powerful proclamation to the powers of Satan. Hello? Coming together is a powerful proclamation. You have come today, the powers of Satan is shaking and destroyed in the name of Jesus. That's why the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, forsake not the assembling of the saints. Why? Because coming together is something very powerful is about to happen. And so he says, when you have come together, when they were assembled together, therefore when they had come together, tell your neighbor, come together. Say, I've come together for a purpose. Hallelujah. I've come together to receive the powerful gift of the Holy Ghost. I've come together to, so that I will receive my miracle in the name of Jesus. That's what you're saying to your, and you're making a proclamation. You're making a declaration that I've come for a purpose of coming together in the body of Christ. Coming together has a purpose. Hallelujah. So they came together and they asked him saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? When you're born again and water baptized, you're still operational in the flesh. Hello? You say, no pastor, you know my name is written in the book of life. How can you say I'm operating in the flesh? Yes, sir. Because the disciples were still operating in the flesh. They were thinking about an earthly kingdom of Yeshua. They have not yet had the revelation of the resurrection. They have not yet had the revelation of eternity. They have not had the revelation of the kingdom of God that is going to fill the earth and the people of God will live eternally with Jesus the Messiah. Therefore, they did not have the revelation of the resurrection and therefore they are asking a fleshly question. And they are saying what? It is not for you to know. Right? What, did, what were they asking? They are asking, Lord, are you still doing something, O God? Are you restoring your kingdom, O Master? What are you going to do, O Lord God Almighty, that they are asking? Will you restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. That does not mean that you are, you'll not be a planner. That does not mean that you will not make up your calendar. That does not mean that you will not do anything because God said, hey, it's not up to you. When will I restore the kingdom? No, 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 no. That's not what Jesus was saying. But if you see in the scripture, he says very clearly, it is not for you know, to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall do what? Receive power. You shall receive power. Say receive power. Say so I'm going to receive power today. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Tap the neighbor. Wake the neighbor up. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to receive power today. I'm going to receive my anointing today. I'm going to receive the revelation of the resurrection today. I'm going to receive my miracle today in the name of Jesus. I'm going to receive the breakthrough that I have been waiting for a long time. I'm going to receive my victory that I've prayed for for a long time. Yes, I know that I've got my victory. When I was born again, I was got my victory. But now I will take that victory to the, to the next level in the name of Jesus. That victory steps will go into the next level and I'll possess the ground that God wants to give me today in the name of Jesus I will possess the land and that's what he's saying it is not for you but you shall receive the power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the end of the earth 
what is jesus saying you shall be my witnesses you will take my gospel and you'll give it to the whole earth right the very first point you should understand is that the holy spirit is the promise of the father say the promise of the father come on say loudly promise of the father when god makes a promise he keeps his promise when god makes a covenant he keeps his covenant when god makes a covenant he is a covenant maker and a covenant keeper and he is the one who will fulfill that covenant in your life are you with me because the bible says in the book of hebrews chapter 6 verse 18 every christian should know every christian should know that it is impossible for god to lie it is impossible for god to lie if my god has never lied and it is impossible for him to lie then i am rest assured that the promise that he has made for me is for my benefit and for my children's benefit in jesus name Amen. hallelujah right because the bible says jesus said the devil is the author of lies in john chapter 8 verse 44 devil is the author of lies he is the father of lies the bible says he satan was a murderer from the beginning who's the murderer satan is the murderer and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him that's what jesus said about satan when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own the bible says right from where he is speaking from his flesh from his own from his own understanding and for he is a liar and the father of it so satan is a liar so what has happened is that yes we are believers we are believing the words of satan or the words of the gossip or the words of the wrong doctrine or the words of the wrong teaching then basing our concept of understanding and our faith on the truth of god's word is very very important because a faith cannot be established or faith cannot be obtained if it is not governed by truth are you with me all people have faith they believe in a lot of things are you with me they believe in themselves they believe in others they believe in the gods and goddesses they believe in the in their religion they believe in everything else but if you don't believe in the veracity of god's word then your belief system or your faith system is polluted and corrupted so it's very important for us to understand that all the promises of god apostle paul says in the book of 2 corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 for all the promises of god in him are yes and in him are amen amen so the promise of the father is yes and amen for me the gift of the holy spirit is then yes and amen for me say yes and amen i'm not saying the word of god says right so it's very very important that we understand that because god is expecting the church to be so solid in their understanding of the gift that god wants to give and has given to the church that they will never be ever oscillated between two opinions right so truth is the cornerstone for the foundation of faith that is trust and without it faith will never be obtainable truth is a cornerstone It is faith established on truth which opens the door for any believer to receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus established this truth in the book of John chapter 14 verse 6. What did Jesus said? Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one. No one can have approach to the Father. You cannot approach the Father in the name of Samuel. You cannot approach the Father in any other name on this planet earth. You cannot approach the father in any other gods or goddesses name it is only in the name of Yeshua the Messiah that you have an access to the father you have access to the creator of heaven and earth it is because of Jesus no one comes to god except through faith in the truth that is Jesus Christ and in the same way no one receives the holy spirit except through faith are you with me So it's important that we understand that in the book of John chapter 14 verses 15 to 18 Jesus is talking some a beautiful passage of scripture says he says if you love me do you love Jesus He says if you love me keep my commandments and I will pray the father he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him for you know him he dwells with you and will be with you hallelujah 
Praise the Lord. He will be with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Hallelujah. When was this? Before Jesus' death. He was about to be crucified. And he's saying, hey, you know, don't be sorrowful. Don't be, you know, uh, discouraged or dismayed. What's going to happen? No, 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 no. My father is a promise keeper. My father who has made the promise. That's the spirit of God. The spirit of Jesus. The spirit of Abba Father will be sent to you. Because in my humanity I'm limited. But in his spirituality he's omnipresent. In his being in the form of a man he was limited. He could not manifest himself to the whole world. Because when the Holy Ghost will come simultaneously. All together all over the universe. The spirit of God will be readily available. Because he is omnipresent. And so he said that he will send you his Holy Spirit. It, is, it should be no surprise to the church that the devil knowing that the Holy Spirit can come to dwell in each believer will do his utmost to stop this from happening. He will do his utmost. That is why wrong doctrines. That's why I say, oh, you know, spirit speaking in tongues is from the spirit of Babel. Hello? You know, they, they were building a, you know, a high tower and God sent, you know, division of tongues. And so they were separated. They could not bring a, a high tower. Babel depicted the, the work of the flesh, the work of man, the work of pride. And God was not interested that you'll have a building built on flesh and built on pride. God was interested that you'll build a kingdom, a kingdom that he is building. And you'll cooperate with him and partner with him in building his kingdom that is a spiritual kingdom. And that is a spiritual Israel that is the church of Jesus Christ will walk in the unison of faith and the unity of faith. Understanding that the promises of the father is from God alone. And therefore the devil was very interested to stop a believer. Remember, a devil cannot stop the believer to receive the Holy Spirit. But the whole question is about what do we the believer believe? Are you with me? We all are believers. The whole world outside is believers. Many people, there are billions of people who are Christians, but they don't believe in the Holy Spirit. They said, oh, Holy Spirit was only the gift of the disciples, of the apostles. The signs and the wonders have ceased. But no, sir, that's not what Jesus said. Right? So the devil has done a masterful job of deceiving the church into believing that the Holy Spirit was only for the select few. And my dear brothers and sisters, that's not what the prophet Joel prophesied. What did prophet Joel prophesy in chapter 2 verse 28? He says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Say all flesh. Not only 120 disciples. And not only the Jewish apostles, no, 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 no. The, 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 the prophet was prophesying that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. That they will, your sons and your daughters will do what? They'll speak in tongues. That they will have visions of Jesus. Uh, your old men will also be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And they'll have visions of God. Uh, and they will prophesy in my name. Even upon your servants, I will pour my Holy Spirit. All flesh that believes. Question. All flesh that believes. When prophet Joel was prophesying to the Israelite people. Israelite people was mandated that they believe the Torah. That is why he was not saying. He did not say all flesh that believe. All flesh because all Israelites were supposed to believe the Torah. Are you with me? So he said all flesh. God is going to pour his spirit upon all flesh. The Jews and the Gentiles. And he will bless the church of Jesus Christ with his powerful gift. So as the author of lies and deceit, what better way to hinder the power of God moving through the church than to convince the church that being filled with the Holy Spirit is the thing of a past. When you start believing that thing, then you will never ever earnestly seek the Holy Spirit. You will never earnestly speak, seek the Spirit of God, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because he says... That this is what is important. And it is important that Jesus instructed everyone to have. What did Jesus say? If you are a disciple of Jesus, you are born again, praise the Lord. You are water baptized, praise the Lord. You are following Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, praise the Lord. Yes sir, we have decided to follow Jesus. But what did Jesus say? And a lot of people ignore that. Let's look in the book of Luke chapter 11 verses 9 to 13. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find knock and it shall be open unto you. These are Jesus' words. Red letter edition. Right? And then he says further down what he says. Alright? 
If you will do what? If you are going to seek me, what are you going to find? For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. I like that word. He that asketh receiveth. Asketh, present continuous tense. You ask from the day that you were born again. You ask from the day that you were water baptized. You ask from the first day of your salvation. And you walk in the presence of God. What he's saying? Asketh, he receiveth. And it's not only physical things or material things or financial things. God is interested in spiritual things. Because all the material things is just, you know, a wink of an eye. Because the Bible says in 633 of Matthew, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Are you with me? So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So the Bible, Jesus is saying, Everyone that asketh receiveth, he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? A beautiful question Jesus is asking. You being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly father not give the? Come on, not give the? Come on, say not give the what? And what did the Jesus said? Huh? You'll get the? Holy Spirit If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children How to give good gifts unto your children How much more shall your heavenly father give That is supply and furnish It's not a one time event One time event you can get the gift of the Holy Spirit And you can speak in tongues and prophesy But he's saying I will continue to give you You'll continue to ask and I'll continue to outpour that is what he's saying. I'll continue to baptize you. It's not that you were baptized once and you started to speak in tongues and prophesy. No, even today is the day of the salvation of Jesus. Even today you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Even today you'll have a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. That means you will, if you'll ask, I will supply and I will furnish the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. Amen. So the condition is what? To ask him. It is important to know that the word receives is translated from the Greek word lambano. In that word, receive it or receives. And what does it say? It means to catch hold of. Right? It means uh, to take as one's own. To seize. Come on. To lay hold of. Take possession of. God is giving you. Right? God is giving you. He's giving you. Come on, take the Holy Spirit. What is your job? Yes, Lord, I prayed. I will grab the Holy Ghost and I will seize the Holy Ghost. I will possess the Holy Ghost and I will be blessed and I will make him my own. And you will not let any enemy or any false teaching or any false doctrine will allow to take away that gift and the promise of the Father that God has given me. Are you with me? So you'll take a thing that is due according to agreement or law. Lambano is a verb which connotes an idea or a faction. There's an action to it. You cannot be docile. You cannot be seated in one place. You have to be proactive in receiving the promise of God. Proactivity on the part of a believer is an expectant ingredient required by the Lord God Almighty. It's an expectation by God that the church will be proactive when the father is giving gifts to you. When we were children and our dad used to come from his duty, he'll come with two bags, right? Okay, when he's gone on his duty, he'll come with his two bags. Uh, and we the children, you know, dad, dad has come, dad has come. We'll go running at the door, you know why? And what we'll do is, forget about dad, we'll give him a kiss, but we're looking in the bag. Mangoes are there, butter is there, jam is there. Oh no, the, this, the sweets is there. Are you with me? So we will be looking into the bag And what we'll do is Even before dad can come in We'll take the bag and we'll be going Gone in That's how children were That's the proactivity God is expecting the church to be Look, Become like a little children That we will go and grab hold of the blessing That God wants to give us And take hold and say God I want you I know you have come into my heart But I want to know that what you have got In your package deal oh God I want to be blessed with salvation With health, with healing, with strength With vigor, with vitality With wealth and with prosperity But all that is alright oh God I want to even have the promise of the Father I want to have the Holy Spirit I want to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit I want to live by the power of the Holy One of Israel 
I want to receive the dunamis of the Holy Spirit of God. I want to have the courage and the boldness of the Holy Spirit. When all the world is trying to shut me down, I will have the courage to boldly proclaim that Jesus the Messiah is the Son of the Most High God. When all the world is trying to shut you down, you need the courage and the boldness of the Holy Spirit. That is why there is more to be born again. There is more to be than being a water baptized individual in the house of God. You must receive the promise of the Father and say, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want to ask you and I want to receive the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. He that asketh receiveth. Is the present continuous tense. Every day I say, Lord, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. I don't want to live in my stale anointing of God because the anointing is always fresh. Hello, anointing is always fresh. God never poured stored anointing in the refrigerator and he brings it out, warms it up and pours it on you. No, 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 no. God never feeds you with stale food. God feeds you with fresh manna in the name of Jesus. God gives you the fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. He pours the fresh oil of his holiness, the fresh oil of the Holy Spirit upon you and he pours it so that every day you will be empowered and equipped and enabled to accomplish the will and the purpose of God that he has sent you on this planet. Amen? Only one amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we are to ask and then we are to take hold of the Holy Spirit. He has given or furnished by God. Now the question is, is there any evidence of his coming? Yes, sir. The book of Acts talks about the evidence of the Holy Spirit. The first church believers were full of the Holy Spirit. There were no denomination. There was no Anglican church, there was no Pentecostal church, there was no Brethren church, there was no Catholic church. There was one church of Jesus Christ. It had no name. The church at Ephesus, the church at Samaria, uh, Smyrna, the church at Thyatira. A place, that's it. No denominations. Denominations is from the devil. Hello? Don't get offended with me. Get offended with the word. There are no denominations. There are no said the Anglican will only go to heaven. It didn't say Pentecostals will go to heaven. It didn't say brethren will go to heaven. Or there are compartments in heaven. For Anglican this portion. Okay then the Catholics this portion. And then this, this portion. No sir. That's the lies of Satan. And we must confront the lies head on. In the name of Jesus. Are you with me? Because if you don't confront the lies. The lies will ultimately overpower us. And overtake us. Because we'll start believing something. That is not true. And that is from the pit of hell. And that's why we must contend for the faith that the Lord has given us. The book of Acts is full of the believers filled with the Holy Spirit doing great feats of God. However, there is one instant that is always stands out and clarifies very importantly that being born again is one thing and getting the gift of the Holy Spirit is yet another thing. Two events. Being born again that you accepted Christ in your heart is one thing. Being water baptized is one thing That is you have been justified But being filled with the Holy Spirit Is yet another event Turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 8 Verses 4 to 23 and very quickly we'll read Alright There those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word I like that it Says scattered When the persecution hits What happens is the church gets scattered Right Church is scattered Even in the first church the persecution came and the church got scattered. But what was happening is, everyone, right? Everyone, the Bible says there in verse first, therefore those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Were well, the apostles only went? Only the pastors went? Only the elders went? Everyone, hello amazing grace, everyone went and did what? Preach the word. How did they preach the word? Because they have got the dunamis in Acts chapter 1. They were empowered with the Holy Spirit that gave them the courage over cowardice. Are you with me? That gave them the triumph over the timidity. That gave them the power to stand against the negative tide of Satan in the name of Jesus. Are you with me? Everywhere that they went, they preached the gospel. And what happened is, that when they had done this thing, then the Bible says, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ. Who was Philip? He was in the ministry of help team. He was a waiter. Hello? This is not Apostle Philip. 
This is not a bishop or a pope or a pastor or a teacher. No, he had no, no position, no title. Zero title. But he was a waiter. He was a, who waited on tables. Philip was one of them. He was in the ministry of helps team. Who says that the people in the ministry of helps team cannot preach the gospel? This guy went to another city of Samaria. And what is he doing? He preached Christ to them. When he preached Christ to them, what happened? All right. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Wow. He did miracles. Now this man who was in the ministry of helps team, he was not an ordinary man. He was a man endued with the Holy Ghost. He was a man who had the dunamis power. He was a man who was moving in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So when he went to another town and he preached the gospel, all the city got saved with one Philip. The ministry of helps team guy was preaching the gospel and they were saved. And what was happening? For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were oppressed. And they were paralyzed and lame were healed and there was great joy in that city. What was there? Great joy. Sometimes we come to church with the long faces. We can't even say hello with a smiley face. We've got that little, you know, sand grain in our shoe that is hurting us, that causes us big sorrow to come. Are you with me? We are still looking at the small box and the wheelbarrow. And our focus of attention is on small little thorn that has pricked us during the week. That I can't get over it. The little offense that I can't overcome it. A little, you know, humiliation that my boss gave me because he reprimanded me because you were coming all the time late into the house of God. Oh, sorry. Into, the, into your office. And so he reprimanded you and he gave you a notice. So you got offended. Are you with me? And so you cannot get over it. Small things. No, 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 no. My dear brothers and sisters, this was a man who was endued with power on high and the whole city of Samaria came to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? And there are two events recorded here. When Philip preached, salvation came. Right? Salvation came. And what happened? But there was a certain man called Simon. Simon was also a great man. And what was Simon doing? The Bible records that who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria. Right? Claiming that he was someone great to whom they all gave heed. From the least to the greatest saying what? Oh, this man is from God. This man has got great power of God. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries. Amen? He was mesmerizing the whole city of Samaria till the time Philip came. And not only that, when Philip came, unclean spirits came out. And during Philip's ministry, the sorcerer got saved. Amen? Come on, sorcerers today get saved. I know sorcerers who were in the past in India and Africa, today they are pastoring, a, pastoring churches. They were sorcerers, they were in, into witchcraft, into occult. But now they are pastoring churches. You know why? Because they have encountered the God of Israel. They have encountered Yeshua the Messiah. They have been endued with power from on high. And so this sorcerer got saved. Hallelujah. And so what happened is, right? Because but when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom, his sorceries, you know, he believed. He believed and he got born again. He got saved, the Bible says. And the Bible records what? That this man got saved. Simon verse 13 says, Simon himself also believed and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip. Saved, baptized, working with Philip. Hello? Good sign, right? Good sign. But being saved, being water baptized, but still operating in the flesh when our next event is taking place. Let's look into that. It will clear your doubt completely. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Come on. They were born again. They were water baptized. And they were sincerely following Philip. 
But when the headquarters got the message that Samaria has received the gospel, what they did? They dispatched Peter and John and they say, hey, the Holy Ghost has not yet come upon them. Go and pray for them that they will get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen, Chaku. Praise the Lord. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so Peter and John were doing something important and they started to minister and the Holy Ghost fell upon them, the Bible says. I like that. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. Two events. Being born again, water baptized, one event. Another event is that the Holy Ghost has not yet fallen on them. Have you ever been on a mountaintop and then the rain fell on you hard and harsh? Come on. And there was an outpouring of the rain. What did you feel? There was no place for you to run. There was no hut there to hide. There was no umbrella to put on your head. You were drenched from top to bottom. You are wet inside out. Amen. That is what it means when the Holy Ghost has to fall upon them. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Where are the denominations that don't believe in the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Come on. Where are the denominations that say, hey, the Holy Spirit has ceased? Come on. This is the book of Acts, the book of working of miracles. The miracles wouldn't happen if the Holy Ghost has not come upon them. This one man, Philip, could turn the world upside down. A city was saved by one man. But they did not stop there. They sent Peter and Paul. Peter and John, praise the Lord. What to do? Get them equipped, get them filled with the Holy Spirit. When they have the Holy Spirit, when they have the power of the Holy Spirit, that will give them the courage, that will give them the boldness and the power of the Spirit of God will operate through them. Signs, wonders and miracles will continue to happen that began with Philip. Hallelujah. And a lot of time we say signs and miracles are for the past. It was in the apostles age, no sir. Signs and miracles are even today happening right now, right here in our midst in the name of Jesus. Because we believe in the Holy Spirit. Because we believe in this event that the Holy Ghost had not come upon them. And he fell upon them. Then they had only been baptized in the name of Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received. I put that word lambano. What they did? The moment they laid hands, they were receiving the gift. Receiving the gift. They were catching hold of the gift. They received everyone, each one to his own. And they kept the Holy Spirit as the gift of God, as a promise of the Father for themselves. Hallelujah. Because they knew without the Spirit of God, it is impossible to continue to do the works of the Lord. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, it is impossible to cast out a demon. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, it is impossible to overcome temptation and overcome the powers and the carnal flesh nature. And that's what they were doing. Right? So the Bible says, now listen to this. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. <laughs> Being born again and water baptized, you're still operating in the flesh. Hello? You're still trying to bribe. <laughs> Right? Still trying to give some gifts to the apostles. If I'll give a big packet to Pastor Samuel, he probably pray better and longer for me, for my miracle to come. I'll get the better anointing than that brother. The gifting will come more. Not only pastor's anointing, his wife's anointing will also come upon me. Are you with me? Hallelujah. That's what Simon was doing. He was saved, he was water baptized, but he did not, you know, what is happening is, he immediately saw he has not yet received. Nowhere it records that Simon received, he saw that the Holy Ghost had fallen upon them at the hands of the apostles. And so he's watching, he's not come on the line. Listen to this. But from the behind, because he was now following Philip and because of Philip's influence, he had access to Peter and to John. He had access, so he's trying to bribe Peter and John and saying, come on, can I get that gift on a private? And the pastor calls you to pray in the front, you don't. After the service is over, then you come next time. Pastor, can you please pray for me? Hey Baba, why didn't you come when the pastor was calling you for prayer? That is the time that the anointing was operational. It's not that the anointing has departed. I can still pray for you. But that was the time that you could have received your anointing and your blessing. Hello? 
Only one hello. Praise the Lord. So he's saying, give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. He's also asking the same gift that was upon Peter and John, the apostles of Jesus. Same gift. This sorcerer, now born again, water baptized, follower of Philip. Now his intention was to do what? To get it in his own terms, at his own pace, the gift of the Holy Spirit, rather a better anointing than the ones that the city residents were receiving. It's very important that what our intention is. What did Peter say? Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. Your money perish with you. And then he says further down, you have neither part nor portion in this matter for your heart is not right in the sight of God. And then he said what? Repent. Are Pastor, I'm just born again. I'm water baptized. I'm following your teachings. I love you. But now you're telling me to repent because the intention was not right. The heart condition was not right. The motive of the heart was not right. The imagination of the heart was not right. You were, you're asking in the fleshly terms, but the internal motive was to use that gift for your benefit. Because he was making money out of his sorcery. He thought now, hey man, praise the Lord. I don't have to mix any pharmacopoeia. I can only lay hands and the blessing will come upon. This is an easy ride than mixing some pharmaceutical product and give it to these guys. Are you with me? That was the motive. My workload will be lightened and I will only lay hands and they will get the gift of the Holy Spirit. I will lay hands and they will get healed. I will lay hands and they will be delivered from demonic forces. Good asking with the wrong motive. Hello? Good asking, good request with the wrong motive. Was bringing what? About to bring judgment upon this man. And so the Peter said to him, let's look what Peter said. Okay? Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this your wickedness. Jesus came preaching, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. His cousin brother came preaching, John the Baptist, he said what? Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Apostles also maintained the same preaching and he said repent because therefore this is your wickedness and pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven. What can be forgiven? The thought of your heart. The motive of your heart. That's how the book of James says, you pray and don't receive, you pray amiss. You don't pray the will of God. Because your heart is far with your mouth, you approach the presence of God, but your heart is somewhere else. Your heart is burdened. Your heart is only looking to the small box. Your heart is not looking to the bigger picture. But Jesus, when he comes in the presence of Jesus, he can put you under the ultrasound rays, into the MRI machine. And better than any x-ray eyes is the eyes of the Holy Spirit. He discerns your mouth. When you come in the house to set up in the morning, in the ministry helps team, he discerns your motive. Are you coming with a willing heart and a joyful spirit or you're doing it because you're obligated to do it? Because probably you've signed the ministry of helps team guidelines. And therefore you have to show up. Somehow you will show up and somehow you'll come and somehow you'll deliver and try to deliver. No, sir. God is looking at your heart. God is looking at your motive. God is looking at the thoughts of your heart. And he says very clearly, repent therefore of this, your wickedness. And pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. A good question. Can a born again believer be still living in bondage? <laughs> Hello? Born again sorcerer? Simon? Water baptized, follower of Philip, bound in iniquity, poisoned by bitterness. Can today or the church today is still living in that two conditions of being bitter and bound by iniquity? Is a question that we must ask. Can a believer be still living in bitterness and bound by iniquity? Yes, sir. 
Yes. This passage of scripture teaches us very clearly that yes, you may be born again, you may be water baptized, and you may be following and coming to the church every week, but there is probably bitterness or probably you are bound by iniquity and the Lord is saying repent. Why is saying repent? Because the repentance gives you the power to reconcile with God. And God blesses you, right? It's very, very important that you must understand that this event was very revealing because God was doing something very powerful in Samaria. Now remember, Samaria was a city with an interesting past. Under the influence of Jezebel, it became a center of idolatrous worship of Baal. Are you with me? And uh, it was a place where Ahab reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. So it is quite clear that Samaria had had a very checkered past. Idolatry, paganism, taking the children for sacrifice, child sacrifice, all kind of immorality and sin was prevalent in the city of Samaria. Are you with me? And then we had sorcerers like Simon who had influence over the people, over the elect and over the leaders of the city. And so when this was happening, it is very important for us to understand that we must know that this powerful gift of the Holy Spirit is required by every believer so that in this year of harvest and this year of evangelism, we can do the marketplace ministry with authority. Hallelujah. You want to save souls? Yes. You're praying, Lord, give me a soul. You're praying, Lord, give me my relatives. Give me my people who are unsaved. Lord, let them get saved. and Let them be born again. Let them come into the knowledge of the Lord God Almighty. You need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to be a live witness in your life and your living before the world outside. In the church, everyone looks holy. Your pastor also looks holy. Right? Everyone looks holy. Because once a week you see me. But if you see me every day, Will you see the same character that is on this pulpit inside my bedroom? Will you see the same character which is on this pulpit inside when my dining room when I'm eating? Or when I'm driving the car or what am I doing? Am I living the life that the Lord has called me to live is a question. And so for that we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, I had a big, big challenge. You know what was the challenge? Man, all the time, Holy Spirit, Sam, here you have not done right. Okay, repent of this sin. Here you have said lies. Repent of your sin. Ah, Lord, I have said lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You exaggerated. Repent of your sin. Lord, I'm sorry. Exaggeration is also sin. Because you are doing what? Trying to portray something bigger than what it is. Are you with me? So, the Holy Spirit, when He came upon me, I, had, I was battling with my flesh. Till the time I came down, I said, Lord, Holy Spirit, you have me all in all. Whatever you tell me to do, I'll repent and I'll immediately get right with you. Please change me. So the Holy Spirit is gracious. Holy Spirit is your comforter and a counselor. But at the same time, Holy Spirit will come upon you to make you like Jesus. He will come to write the Torah, the word of God into your heart. How can a young man keep himself pure? Is by hiding God's word in his heart. Amen. It's very important. So, it's, let's understand what he's saying. So, let's understand. Two things happen. Okay? Two things must follow. After this insight that the Holy Spirit is giving to you when you receive the Spirit of God. First, the believer needs to ask and need to know that they need to ask the Lord God Almighty or the Holy Spirit. Amen? He who asketh, receiveth. And Jesus was not talking in some material sense. We take that one scripture and says, Lord, your word says, ask and it will be given to me. Give me that girl, O Lord, that I'm looking for a long time. Give me that car, O Lord, that I'm eyeing for a long time. No, no, no. When you see in context, Jesus was saying, hey, when you read in the full context, we read it in context. Okay, it was talking about the Holy Spirit. He who asketh, receiveth. He who knocketh, the door will be opened. He who seeketh, will find. It was talking about the Holy Spirit all along. And so we must... Know that we need to ask God for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will only enter a home when he is invited. He will not force himself. He will not come and kick you and say receive. No, no. He will not push you and say come on fall down receive. No. 
Holy Spirit doesn't have got a pushing and a hair pulling ministry. Hello? Holy Spirit is the gentle spirit of God. He's an honorable spirit of God. He comes in when you invite him. When you give him an invitation, spirit of God, you are welcome. Please come and have your way with me. He feels welcomed. You cannot just say, hey, come on, now receive. And then you then, you know, try to show some demonstration. No, 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 no. Demonstration will happen and all that is fine. But what I'm saying is, he actually comes when you may be seated and he will come upon. You know how I receive the Holy Spirit? I was ministering to my pastor. He had broken his leg. His wife was gone to deliver and he was alone. And so I was ministering on his bed and he asked me a question, Samuel, have you received the Holy Spirit? I said, pastor, honestly, I have been born again and water baptized, but till date I have not spoken in tongues or I have received the Holy Spirit. He said, why is anything bothering you? He said, I said, yes, pastor, because I've seen many people in my church and in my because I grew up in a Pentecostal church and I, I said I saw people talking in tongues but the lives were absolutely corrupt so they spoke in tongues but the life was not right so I got an aversion I said I don't want the Holy Spirit he said but that's not true and he taught me the word. He said, do you want to receive the Holy Spirit now? I was not in a tarry meeting. I was not in a prayer meeting. I was not in a church setting. I was in the bedroom of my past. Hello? And when I was in the bedroom of my pastor, he said, would you like to receive the Holy Spirit? I ministered to him. I've cooked his food, gave him. I washed his clothes, dried it. And I served the man of God. And I sat there. I said, yes, sir. So I sat at the edge of the bed on the side. And he said, would you like to receive the Holy Spirit? I said, yes, pastor. He prayed for me. Within 10 minutes, the Holy Spirit came upon me. I spoke in tongues and I started to prophesy and my graph in the Spirit of God just shot up. I started to do citywide crusades and, and open air meetings worldwide, all over India. Sir. Are you with me? God started opening doors. I needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now remember, I grew up in that environment of speaking in tongues and prophesying and the manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But I got an aversion because the lifestyle of people were not holy. Amen? Right? But that we don't look to the lifestyle of people. We look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And we say, God, I want to receive that baptism of the Holy Spirit that your word has so promised. I want to receive that, O oh God. Right? Secondly, the first thing you have to ask. All right? Say, I will ask. I will every day. It's not that one day you were born again and one day you got filled with the Spirit of God and that's over. No, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit even today. Give me a fresh anointing of God, a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lord, give me a fresh new language, a fresh new syllable, O oh Lord. Uh, give me a new dimension of the Holy Spirit of oh God. Show me, O oh Lord, let, ne, take me to the next dimension of your glory, O oh Lord, of your faith, O oh Master, in Jesus' name. Right? Secondly, it is evident that a heart that is not right with God, a heart filled with sin, even a believer will not experience the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Right? So it's very, very important that when we come, we come with humility. We come with honesty. Not like Sosra who's trying to bribe Peter and John to receive the gift. Are you with me? All the other people were getting the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This guy did not... Why? Because he was messing up. His motive was wrong. So when we come into the presence of God, we saw, Lord, I need your Holy Spirit. I need the promise of the Father. Please, O oh God, and bless me. And he will bless you with his best. Right? So this begs us the question, can a believer still be filled with sin? Yes, we have understood that. Let's open the Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. There's a, a, a situation in the Corinth church. An apostle Paul is writing to the church that is condoning sin by one young man. Hello? A lot of time you see, pastor, you know, that guy is doing this, that guy is doing this, that woman is doing Don't bring it to the pastor. It is your responsibility to bring correction in the body of Christ. Wherever it is. Wherever you find sin, correct it. Wherever you find something going wrong, correct it. It's your prerogative. You are called to be the watchman over the walls of Jerusalem. Hello? You and I are called what? Watchmen over the house of God. All of us. We are the company of royal priesthood of God. It's not only the responsibility of the elders and the pastors to bring correction. No, 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 sir. You have the equal right and the authority. If you see sin around your neighborhood, please bring correction. 
So what he's saying here in 1 Corinthians 5, 1 to 5, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and such sexual immorality is not even named among the Gentiles that a man has his father's wife. What a shame. And you are puffed up and have not rather moaned that he who has done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I indeed as absent in body but present in spirit have already judged as though I were present. Him who has so done this deed, what he must do? In the name of our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together, listen to this, when you are in the church, along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, deliver such a man to whom? Huh? Deliver such a one to Satan to be what? For the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Right? His human spirit may be saved in the Lord, in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the good news is that this man later on repented because the church rebuked him. Because there was a sexual immorality in the house of God. A lot of time we are so afraid, you know, it's his problem, God knows, God will judge. We leave everything to God. Are you with me? No, 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 no. Certain things that he has given to us as elders, as leaders and as the body of Christ that we will bring correction in the house of God. And Paul is writing to the Corinth church which he has planted. Why have you, why have you tolerated this guy who is living in blatant open sin in the church? Hello? When the sin is rebuked, people don't like it. But it has to be rebuked. Because the church is the ecclesia, the separated, called out body of Jesus Christ, called out of darkness into the eternal light of Jesus. We are the holy people of God. Are you with me? And therefore holiness must be the bottom line of the body of Christ. It's very, very important. So the question is, can sin stop the power of God from moving in one's life to the point that the enemy can destroy their flesh but not their born again spirit? Yes. That's why Jesus said what? If your eye sins, pluck out that eye and throw it. Gorge it out. If your hand sins, cut that hand off. Man, God is teaching what? Jesus said that? Yes. Jesus said if your flesh is become a hindrance to you to go to heaven, go with one hand into heaven and be safe and sound rather than you are sinning with that organ of your body. That's why if you're addicted to any sin, any sexuality, any pornography or anything that is hindering you in the growth of the Lord Jesus Christ, destroy it. You cannot do it till you have the power of the Holy Spirit. You need to have the dunamis and the courage and the power of the Holy Spirit to say no to sin. If you really want to lead an overcoming life in the Lord Jesus Christ, you need the dunamis power on the kratos power of the Spirit of God that will enable you to overcome every challenge that your flesh brings, right? So, the question there is, okay, Satan for the destruction of the flesh. The word destruction translates from the Greek word olethros. And it means, which has several definitions, it means to destroy, state of utter ruin, that which brings corruption, death or punishment. That is the word used. And there's a classical example in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 9. It says the conscience of those who seek wealth is seared and they are thus in the danger of what? Danger of falling into temptations that will plunge them into complete olethros. Don't let complete destruction happen to you. And the church worldwide is struggling to overcome the sins and the world and the temptations of the world because Satan has kept them in the deceit that Holy Spirit is not required for them. It is the power of the Holy Spirit and it is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit that will give you the power, the boldness and the courage to face your sin face to face and destroy it. And cast it out in the name of Jesus. And therefore the Bible is saying very clearly. Falling into temptation that will plunge them into complete ruin. That is destruction and perdition King James says. 
destruction and perdition in the scripture. Are you with me? So the truth is as many want to experience this powerful gift from God of the Holy Spirit, as we have discovered, there are only two things that will stop the Holy Spirit. Number one is unbelief, that is no trust. And number two is sin in the heart. And my dear brothers and sisters, if we are blood washed believers of Jesus Christ today, let me tell you, my prayer is that all of us, the whole body of Jesus Christ and everyone who's watching us live on this Facebook, let me tell you that if you are the true remnant of the living God, you must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You must receive the promise of the Father. You must receive the powerful gift of the Holy Spirit that is in store for everyone who asketh. Hallelujah. Everyone who asketh. And therefore, in this year of harvest and in this year of evangelism, as Jesus said in the book of Mark chapter 16 verses 15 to 18 Go into all the world Jesus said And do what? Preach the gospel It's not for Pastor Samuel For you too For you Philips and Timothys Who are working in the ministry of help stream You also go Everyone will go and preach the gospel He who believes and is baptized Will be saved That means he'll come to the outer court Hello he has got now access and he will come into the outer court because he's been called. He has believed in Jesus. He has been saved and has been water baptized. He's got entrance in the outer court. And so there he will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. It didn't so. We said Jesus said Jesus did not come to condemn us. Yes, but his words say so. These are his words. They are Jesus' words. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel to the church. Right? And then he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. Did they write the apostles? Did they write the select few of the 120? No. In my name, even the smallest child, Deborah and Stuti and, and my dear Wangani will also cast out demons. Amen? No man. Are you willing to cast out demons today when you go out? Are you willing to live a bold and a courageous life when you go out? Are you willing to take that banner of victory and say, Lord, I'm going to fly it high through my social media. I will not be afraid to lift up the name of Jesus. I'll not be afraid to say that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Are you with me? It needs courage. So in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Tongues is plural. It didn't say tongue. Tongues. What tongues? There are many kinds of tongues. There is a human tongue. Then there is your... Huh? The human tongue, the tongue that you speak with. English, Hindi, Marathi, Arabic, Malayalam, whatever. Tamil. Sinhalese. Afrikaans. That's your tongue. That you speak and communicate. But then there are other tongues too. There's the tongue of the unknown. That is the tongue probably from the demonic pit. From the pit of hell. That's the tongue too. Satan has a tongue. He speaks. Demons have a tongue. They speak. Demonic language. That's a tongue. Are you with me? Or you can say a carnal tongue. A fleshly language. And then there is the Holy Spirit. That comes forth from heaven. So there, Jesus is very clearly saying tongues. You'll speak in your mother tongue. And sometimes people speak in the devil's tongue. And sometimes when people are baptized in the Holy Spirit, they'll speak in the heavenly tongue. The unknown tongue, the language that God gives you. Therefore the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and go back home and read. It talks about that I speak in tongues. I speak mystery unto God. My spirit, though my mind is unfruitful, my spirit is alive and speaking and praying unto the Father in heaven. And I'm praying the will of God. You're praying powerful prayer when you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The prayer of tongues is the more powerful and the most powerful prayer that you can ever make. That's why Apostle Paul is telling to the church, in my privacy, I speak in tongues more than any one of you. That means round the clock, I'm speaking in tongues. I'm driving the car, I'm speaking in tongues. I'm cooking my food, I'm speaking my tongues. I'm ministering somewhere, I'm speaking in tongues. In my washroom, I'm speaking in tongues. In my dining room, I'm speaking in tongues. In my marketplace, I'm speaking in tongues. 
Why? Because that's the most perfect prayer that you can ever make to God. Because the Spirit knoweth the mind of God and He prayeth for the saints. The Bible says in the book of Romans 8. Are you with me? And then it further down says, They will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Guarantee. What is the guarantee? You'll speak in tongues. And then if you take up serpents by mistake, they will not bite you, harm you. If you drink anything poisonous substance, by mistake somebody gave you, your drink laced with drugs, it will not harm you. It's not that you'll try God and say, okay, now let me try some poison and see. Because, oh, I'm believing on the word. Don't test your God. We are not called to test God. We are called to believe God for what he says. And it will by no means hurt them. That's what the Bible is saying. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That's what my brother Chris was saying that you'll go out. You will go out and lay hands on the marketplace and they will get healed. They will get healed. They will get healed. Are you sick today? Get healed right now. In the name of Jesus. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and say, God, I want to do what I've called to do in the name of the Lord. I want to press on toward that holy of holies of God. And I want to receive the best promise of the Father. I want to get that gift of the Holy Spirit of God. The promise of the Father, the powerful gift of the Holy Spirit that I will not be powerless of God. I will have power over demons, power over everything else in the name of Jesus. Amen. God has given you authority and power to trample over snakes, over scorpions and over all the power of Satan. And by no means any hurt or any harm will come near your dwelling. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's all rise in the presence of God. Come on. Come on. Start praying. Start praying. Everyone. Everyone. Say Lord, give, bless me with this powerful gift of God. Bless me, Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit of God. I need you, Lord. Shena mandara kanama se. If you are here present and you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, as I clearly mentioned and taught to you from the Word of God, that there was yet another event because the Holy Ghost has not fallen on them. And the Holy Ghost fell on them when Peter and John laid hands on them and prayed. If you're in that place that you have not yet received the Holy Spirit and after this message you have believed in your heart that this is the promise of God and you also want to receive that gift. Today is your day. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for yet another meeting. Very quickly step out from your chair. Come in the front. We'll pray with you. The leadership team along with me will pray with you and you will speak in tongues. You will be baptized in the Holy Spirit and you will be blessed. And everyone who is watching us live, I would encourage you wherever you are, pray and ask the Lord to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And whilst we are praying for our people here, you will also receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You'll receive the gift, the powerful gift that God wants to bless you with. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, everybody, everybody, anyone. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you, when the Father is willing to give you the gift, we must run to receive what the Lord has promised us. Shekhanah. It is the promise of the Father. It is the promise of the Father. You need to believe. You need to receive. You need to ask. You need to repent of your sin. Peradventure, if you come with the wrong motive and say, God, I want to ask your forgiveness in Jesus' name. Change me. Change me, Lord. Transform me, Lord. If you're here for the first time and you want to be born again, you also can step forward and come forward and we'll pray with you. If you want to receive Jesus in your heart, if till date you have not accepted Jesus and made him your savior, made him your Lord, then today is the day of your salvation. Because Jesus loves you. He's here to forgive you. He's here to cleanse you. To create within you a clean heart, mind and thoughts that you'll become his son and his daughter. He's here to bless you in the name of Jesus. Shela Mandala Come on, all the believers, can we pray in tongues? Come on. Thank you, Jesus.
come on pray in tongues lift up your voices come on everyone few more minutes come on shela mandala ma sikoro monderele messi come on everywhere lift up holy hands pray the lord pray unto the lord hallelujah era la ma sakala mandoro kuna ma sherele mende yene messi na 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 ma koro lo moshi ara la mandere kina ma sara la mandala ria la ma shokoro lo monde yere le messi kene mende My dear brothers and sisters come on The Lord is calling you She call him on the Yanamasi Siana mandoro Holy Spirit We need you Yes Thank you Jesus Come sweet spirit I pray Come and I strength and i power come in thy own special way come holy spirit we need you come sweet spirit of god strength and the power come in thy own special way ora la mande ya na ma chiere le ro for my soul sweet oh for my soul sweep over my soul my rest is complete as i said at thy feet sweet spirit sweep over thank you for this day of god we want to say thank you for the powerful gift of the holy ghost we want to say thank you for the powerful gifts of the spirit of god 
Lord, we want to say thank you for the promise of the Father this morning in the name of Jesus. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor for the Spirit of God that lives in us, that dwells in us, and that will be with us forever and forever. Lord, I pray, help us to believe. We have believed yesterday, we believe today, we'll continue to believe tomorrow. Oh Lord, that you will bless us with the best. That the promises of God are in yes and amen. That you'll bless us with the best gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, you'll bless us with the gift, best promise of the Father. And I pray that as your church, we will receive your gift. As your church will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. As your church will receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. As your church, everyone listens to us live, oh God. They will catch hold and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus. I release your anointing upon your church. Fresh anointing. Fresh oil of the Holy Spirit. Fresh word. Fresh revelation of your resurrection. Fresh revelation of your Holy Spirit. Fresh revelation, O Lord of the event, that the Holy Ghost will fall upon them. Open the floodgates of heaven and pour out your blessing upon your church. We are your church, bought by your blood, filled by you, with your Holy Spirit. Even now, pour your blessing, O God. And I pray that the Shekinah glory of Jesus will be the portion of your church. I pray that when we step out into the world, we'll have the courage, the boldness, the power of the Holy Spirit. We will have, O Lord, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We'll have the courage to say no to sin and yes to Jesus. We'll have the courage, O Lord God Almighty, to humble ourselves and to submit ourselves to the leading of the Holy Spirit. We all want to be led by your Spirit, O God. Lead us, guide us, guard us, preserve us, protect us, and bless us. I pray, Lord, that you will forgive us if we had had any wrong motive in our hearts. Forgive us, O God. Cleanse us as your church. That we will come to you in your presence. We'll come with the right motives, O God. Oh Lord, when we are saved and we are born again and water baptized, oh Father, we following Christ, oh God, we will follow you wholeheartedly, oh Lord. We'll follow you, oh Lord, with a righteous heart because the kingdom of God is within us. The kingdom of righteousness, peace and joy of the Holy Spirit. As your servant, I release your blessings upon your church. As your servant, I release the Abrahamic covenantal blessings upon your church. And everyone, oh Lord, I pray that Father will be blessed. As Abraham was rich in faith, your church will be rich in faith. As Abraham was rich in cattle, in gold and silver, so shall your church will be rich in cattle, in gold and in silver. And you will bless your people. You will fight for them. And the enemy that they have seen till date, they will see their enemy again no more. Because you have risen on our behalf and you have scattered all our enemies. And we want to say thank you for that. We give you the praise, glory, honor, dominion, power, authority, because it all belongs to you. We thank you for healing us and blessing us. Thank you for your word. And I pray that you will receive all the glory. In Jesus' most holy, mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of the Father and the fellowship of His sweet Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. And all the saints of God said, Amen and Amen and Amen. Give the Lord a big clap offering. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you.